Hallelujah. It's not about us, but it's all about him. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And uh, let's go back to uh, the book of Luke. Amen. As we were, uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 27 through 33. Hallelujah. I'm going to read those scriptures. Hallelujah. We do have a few scriptures to go to here today. And uh, uh, I want to be led by the Spirit of God. I'm not going to say I will remember every scripture, but he brings a scripture back to my mind. I'll say it, amen, if I remember it. Amen. Maybe we'll go there, maybe we won't. Praise God. But I'll speak what the Lord put on my heart to speak. Hallelujah. Let's read in uh, uh, Luke, chapter two, Luke chapter 1, verse 27, starting. It says, to, to a virgin espoused to a man, he was talking about uh, Mary, obviously. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hell, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there shall be no end. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Of his kingdom, there shall be no... I don't know if y'all caught that. Um, you know, well, let me, I'll go back and read that again. But uh, there's a couple of things that jumped out at me. How, how, how awesome it is to be favored of God. Amen. To have, to, to have found favor with God. Amen. To, to be... Uh, uh, and God called Mary, uh, the angel representing God said uh, she was blessed among women, amen. And we know that it, to be true, Mary was blessed, amen, among women. Because she was the vessel God chose to bring his son into the world through, amen. Praise God for that. And it's awesome that uh, God can use any of us to be a vessel to bring his word through, amen. Uh, Jesus being the word of God made flesh, amen. So God physically brought his son into the world through her, but God uh, favor is on each one of us as believers, amen. And we're able to bring forth his word, amen, just as she did, but uh, in a spiritual way that others may be, lives may be changed, hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Um, and the word says that uh, uh, his name was called Jesus, amen, and we know, we, we all know that name, amen, amen. Uh, the name of Jesus, uh, uh, we hear it called uh, Christ Jesus, amen, and that word Christ simply means someone anointed to be ruler, or someone, amen, or Messiah, praise God, and uh, if you were Jewish, Jewish people understand the word Messiah, they're still looking for the Messiah, Amen. To come, except those that are already uh, uh, Messianic Jews, and that simply is referring to they know who the Messiah is. A messianic Jew is someone that's received Jesus, and they recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, just as well as those of us that are believers that are non-Jews, we know that Jesus is our Messiah. Hallelujah. And Jesus, that His name in Matthew uh, one and twenty-one, the angel told. Mary that um, his name should be called Jesus and said that name Jesus means Savior. Hallelujah. So we thank God for our, our Savior. Praise God. So, amen. What we're getting to today, praise God, is simply about who Jesus is. Amen. Because uh, the doctrine of the church, the, the doctrine of the church is that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, I grew up uh, in church. You know, I grew up going to a Baptist church uh, uh, for, you know, my first 18 years that I remember. You know, as long as I can remember. My, my mother made me go to church, amen. 
uh, and uh, you know I heard the scriptures and uh, everything, but uh, I didn't give the. I, I didn't know. I heard that Jesus was the Son of God, but that didn't mean anything to me. Then, you know, I didn't understand the deity behind that title, the Son of God. Uh, I just knew that was. They say he's the Son of God. Okay, that sounds all right. But when someone came to me and told me that he was God manifested in the flesh, I was like, what? Mm. Uh, you know, the natural man, the Bible says, does not receive the things of God. Neither can he discern them because they're foolishness to him. Amen. When you're a natural man, you can't understand the things of God. Amen. You have to get illumination or revelation from God on his word. Amen. Um, a natural man can't understand that. You know, you can explain stuff to people, and maybe they can't get it intellectually, but spiritually, to truly understand it, you have to get revelation from God. Amen. You really do have to get revelation from God. You can't understand those uh, spiritual things from a natural point of view. Praise God. Um, so I had heard that all my life, that Jesus was the Son of God, and I still didn't really understand what it meant. But uh, on the 1st of September, 1983, I truly gave my heart and my life to Him. I surrendered my heart to Him on that day, amen. And I remember that day to this day that I gave the Lord my life. And it was a simple act of faith. All I did was... Um, uh, I believe God's word. Someone came to me, uh, witnessed to me, told me about the Lord, and I had been hearing this stuff all my life. But all of a sudden, the illumination came. And now I was interested from a spiritual point of view, not just from a natural point of view. And, and the way it was presented to me, the way the Lord spoke to me through this person, all of a sudden I realized there was more to this thing than what I thought it was. Amen. It's not something you can figure out with your, well, I couldn't figure it out with my natural mind. Amen. So um, all of a sudden I realized that it was more to Christ than just a man. You know, people still to this day will compare him to other, as other Johnny said, he's the only one that got up out of the grave. We serve the true and the living God. Amen. But he's the only one that got up out of the grave. Because when you go to the tomb where they lay him at, he's not there. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. That he's not there but that he's in heaven, amen, ever making intercessions for us. He's seated at the right hand of the Father on high. And um, what I'm saying about this, though, is what I want to present to you today is about Christ and who he truly is, amen. Uh, uh, if you wanted to have a title to this message, you would ask, uh, the title I wrote down here is while I was writing this out, I said, who is he? Is he just a man? And we know those of us that are believers, we know that he's not just a man. Hallelujah. And we're simply going to go with some scriptures to confirm that. Amen. And my prayer is that, uh, that we all know that today, but then we'll have more answers to give to those who don't know. Amen. Amen. Maybe there's someone that will see a video or something, and this will answer some of their questions. Hallelujah. So this angel came to Mary. Uh, we know it was the angel Gabriel, other places in the scriptures. Show, shows that how that that's who it was that came to her, amen, uh, that uh, announced the coming of Christ, that she was going to be born, she was a virgin, and she was not impregnated by a man, and uh, people have all kinds of strange doctrines, even about the, uh, her being uh, a virgin, amen, and other things, but the doctrine that the Bible teaches is that she was a virgin, Amen. When she was conceived, amen. And God placed his word in her, amen. Let's go real quickly to uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verse 22 through 25. Praise God. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Starting at verse 22. Let me try to get there real quick. Hallelujah. So, um, and while we're going there, I'll talk about, this was prophesied even in the Old Testament that this was going to come to pass. This is nothing new for most of us saints. But when you go to the Old Testament and you read about this, in the, even in the garden, God told Adam, Adam and Eve that the seed of the woman was going to bruise Satan's head, amen, and that Satan would bruise his heel. Well, a woman don't have a seed. At least not according to the natural. Amen. The woman don't have a seed. The man carries the seed. 
But this seed was a supernatural seed. This is actually a reference, the first reference to the coming of Christ, amen, in Scripture. And um, when you go to uh, 1 Peter, amen, chapter 1, verse 22, and you read this, I'll read it off the screen here since I got it in my Bible. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. Now, hold it right there for a minute. I want to talk about this word corruptible. Corruptible simply means capable of being corrupted, demoralized, bribed, uh, debased. Amen. So a corruptible seed is what a man passed to his wife. Amen when they uh, conceive a child. But the seed that was passed to Mary was not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. Amen. The Word of God was formed in her womb through her flesh. Amen. When you go back into the Scriptures and you study the lineage of Christ, you'll see in Matthew the lineage of, uh, of uh, Joseph was laid out, and in Luke the lineage of Mary was laid out. Because Mary was actually from David also. Amen. So, so the scriptures were fulfilled that he was uh, from the lineage of King uh, David and also from the seed of David, amen? Because there was no man that provided the seed, but it was the word of God that was the seed that was formed in Mary, praise God. Uh, but it's not a natural seed, but an incorruptible seed. The same seed that you receive when you are born again, praise God, when you receive Christ. Amen, the word come forth. You receive that word, that incorruptible word is on the inside of you. And God's word live and abide forever. Amen. His word does not become corrupt. It does not decrease. Amen. It does not lose its power. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. God. Go to the next scripture, please. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass, and the grass withered, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Praise God. The word of the Lord abideth forever. So what we understand about Christ is he's the word of God made flesh. But amen, when you read that in Luke chapter 1, that seems like it's the beginning of Christ, but that's not. That's the beginning of a natural, him putting on flesh. But we understand as believers that that wasn't the beginning of Christ, because Christ has no beginning, as Scripture says, amen, he's from everlasting to everlasting, hallelujah, he's, amen, the word of God made flesh that is incorruptible, amen, and him being the son of God, uh, when we go to Philippians chapter 2, and we see that, try to get there real quick, Uh, this is a uh, fundamental stuff, amen, that we're talking about. But sometimes um, we'll be surprised how many people don't get the fundamental stuff. Praise God. Um, let's go to verse uh, Philippians chapter two, starting at uh, I'm gonna start at verse five. Praise God. Amen. Amen. This, this, praise God, he's moving up pretty fast. Uh, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And verse 8 says, And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Praise God. Now, I just wanted to focus on this part right here where it says, Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. 
Amen. The scripture reads that says that plainly. Amen. That Jesus was being, he was in the form of God before he came to this earth. He was in the form of God. And he was equal with God. Who in the world would call himself equal with God? Mm -hmm. Huh? Uh, uh, well, we, we hear about all these other gods. And uh, we can go down the list. No point in doing that. We know what we do is we study the real thing. So we recognize when you uh, see the uh, fake coming along, just like you study real money, when you see fake money coming along, you find out real quick because it, it don't look like the real thing, amen? Um, the point being here is that he made himself, he was, before he became a man, he was in the form of God, amen? And he thought it not robbery, robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And that's what took place in Luke chapter 1, amen, that he took on the likeness of men. Amen. He was still God Almighty, but yet uh, laid aside the privileges of God, but it didn't stop him from still being God. But at the same time, he was 100% man when he put on that flesh. He, he, he felt the same Feelings we feel, amen. The Bible said he was tempted in all ways just as we are, but without sin. Hallelujah. He didn't sin, praise God. Amen. But praise God he didn't sin. Amen. Hallelujah. So he was able to be the sacrifice for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory amen. to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That is right. Because uh, we don't want to be, we thank God we were in need of a Savior. We still in need of him. Amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Continue to finish this walk out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Um, and so the scripture does point out in many places. And I want to take you to a couple of places here real quick and show you some things about what did uh, other people say about Jesus? What did the father say about his son? The father bear witness to his son, who he is. Amen. Uh, the spirit of God bear witness to the son, who he is. Amen. And it's all in scripture. Amen. Even his apostles, his disciples that followed him, Christ bear with, witness to himself who he is. Amen. And uh, we just need to know that. So when someone comes saying something foolish to us that Jesus was just a man, you, you can answer them with the word of God. Amen. Amen. This is what the word of God says about who Christ is. This is what Christ said about himself. Because people don't say that. They claim that Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, he didn't, if he didn't claim to be God, my goodness, um, who, who calls himself equal with God? Mm. Huh? That's, if, that ain't, if that's not claiming to be God, that's the most blasphemous statement I ever heard. <laughs> if, he, if it's not true. But we know it to be the truth, amen? amen. But that, what's so awesome about it is that he humbled himself, made himself of no reputation. We're really not going to get the impact of this until we get to heaven and we really see him in his full glory. What he gave up for us, amen? Yes. We'll get the full understanding of it then. Yes. But in the meantime, we have an opportunity while we're here in the flesh to get closer to him, to, to spend time with him, to seek him in his word, to seek his face. And I love how God used Elder Jonathan to keep reminding us of this. And we're going to all keep rehearsing this and tell, saying it until we all do it. Don't put, your, don't put God in your schedule. Put your schedule in God. And once we get a hold of that, man, we're going to see some things. We're going to see a move of God like, like never before. It's going to happen, y'all. It's going to come to pass. Amen. God is doing it right now. He's doing it in each and every one of us. But we all are part. We're a part of his body. we got to do our part. Don't say that you don't have a part to play. Yes, you do. That's why you're here. He called you here. Whether you're young as Jalil or as old as the, oldest, the most mature person here. Because <laughs> I don't want to sound disparaging about someone because they got age on them. We want to bless them. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And I'm pointing at Elder Bedoya because I believe he's the most senior person here. But I don't know. God knows. <laughs> but he's the awesome man of God. And he's in great shape for somebody his age. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. But my point being is there's no little eye, no... Big eyes and little use, however you say that. 
in Christ. He, he wants to use each and every last one of us. Amen. Because it's not about your power or what you can do. It's about his power that dwells on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So let's look at some of these uh, testimonies. Let's go to the book of Hebrews and see what the father had to say about his son. Hebrews chapter 1. Sundry times and in diverse manners spake in the past times unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person, and upholding all things by the power of, by the word of his power, when he had by himself first our sins sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being so much better than the angels as he have inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. That's the word of by inheritance. For unto which of the angels are, excuse me, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, art, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to, excuse me, he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bring forth the first begotten unto, into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. And the angels, and of the angels, he said, who make of his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he said, Thou throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Hold it right there. What? Well, let me finish reading, then we'll go back. Go, go, one more scripture, go back to what you just did. No, no, I meant the other way. Keep going forward. Yes. Thou hast. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Now, um, did y'all notice something there? I know y'all noticed that. <laughs> Praise God. God is calling his son God. God is calling him God. Well, how many gods are there? I thought there was one God. Huh? Uh, it's not confusing. It's simply uh, the scripture says that there are three that bear witness in heaven: the Father, the Spirit, and the Word. And these three are one. Amen. Amen. So what we have to understand is um, God is a spirit. He's, super, he's a supernatural being. You can't understand everything supernatural with your natural mind. But God give, has given us natural things as a reference to supernatural, the spirit realm. You understand what I'm saying? God has given us uh, natural things so we can relate to when he speaks of supernatural things to us. There's only one God, amen? amen. But there's, uh, just like there's one me, but God says, he, when you go back to the book of Genesis, when he created Adam and Eve, he said, uh, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So, one man, 
standing in front of you, you see my natural body. But inside my body, I have a spirit. Well, I am a spirit. Amen. And I have a soul. So I'm a three-part being. But naturally, all you see is one part of me. Praise God. So there's one God, but he's a supernatural being. Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So God calling his son God, that is obviously God knows better than we do what's going on. He's, his son is God. His son is his word. His word is part of him. His word is eternal that existed with him for an eternity past. That's why when you study the scriptures and you find out in the Old Testament, the Bible says that, uh, and we've heard Pastor Tim quote this numerous times, and we all need to be familiar with these scriptures, that the, Jesus told the old, the, the, the uh, scribes and the Pharisees, you study the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. They were talking about, the, he was talking about the Old Testament. So all of it testifies of Christ from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to Revelations, it's all about him. We say that, but it literally does mean that. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the world, heavens and the earth, excuse me. I'm so busy trying to get that word out of me. <laughs> and when he spoke, his word went forth and made it happen. Amen. So uh, you see when you go back to the book of Genesis and you uh, read that, you see the, the entire Godhead, as uh, theologians call it, the Godhead, when they refer to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they refer to them as the Godhead, amen? And scripture actually uh, refers to that same, same thing. But we're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm praying that I don't confuse you, that you will follow me. But like I said, simply, we have to study the scriptures to get an understanding of the word of God. Because your natural man is not going to understand this. You've got to get revelation from God on this. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's deep, but it's simple. But it is a revelation. <laughs> Amen. Revelation is not, you're not going to understand it with your natural mind. The, in Genesis 1 and one says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. And it's in those uh, three sentences, three uh, verses, you see the Father, the Spirit, and the Word yep. all in operation. Praise God. Amen. Um, so, but we're focusing here on the Son of God. So, and, and me as a natural man, if I had a son, he came out of me. He was, came out of my seed. And he became part of, he, he came into existence because once upon a time, you know, he didn't exist. He was my seed. But then uh, the seed matured and became a man. And that man would look a lot like me, just like I look like my father. Uh, I sound something like my father, but I'm not exactly like my father. You know what I'm saying? We do have some differences. But uh, so in the natural, when you hear something about a father and a son, you think, okay, the father was there before the son, and then. But you got to realize that God is a supernatural being. A soup, God is a soup. He never had a beginning. And the Bible says God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And it also says that about Christ, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know, when you study the scriptures out, the same type of scriptures they talk about the father, they talk about the son. Those scriptures over and over again that confirms that who Jesus is. Because, and, and the reason it says that is because God is an eternal being. God doesn't learn anything new. He can't learn anything new. Because there's nothing new for him to learn. He, he's, he's perfect. Amen. So he doesn't grow. He doesn't deteriorate either. Amen. So anything that comes out of him is eternal, just like he's eternal. So his word, being a part of him, is eternal, just like he is. So before Jesus became a man and put on flesh, he was eternal, he eternally existed inside of God as his word. Amen? Yeah. The word of God made flesh. Praise God. That's what's, so we have to understand that, that Jesus is God in the flesh. Praise God. And the, and the scripture points it out over and over again. So right here, the father has testified that his son is God. Because 
uh, re understanding the Ten Commandments, one of the, uh, the first commandments is that uh, thou shalt have no other God before me. And the reason God's saying it, not because there are other gods, uh, because people, because of uh, mankind, we tend to want to worship what we see. So we'll make gods, we'll, we'll make images, I should say, and then call them God. You know, we do stuff like that because we're under the influence of, first we're corruptible bodies, and then we're under the influence of an enemy. We have an enemy who's Satan, who will uh, lead us to do stuff like that. Simply because what he's trying to do is, uh, uh, because he can't stop the word of God, he can't camouflage the, well, he can't, uh, the word of God is eternal. It lasts forever. We, we read that in uh, First Peter. So if, if I'm an enemy, since I can't corrupt this word, I can't destroy this word, I can't get rid of it, and it's so powerful that it'll change your life if you get a hold of it. So what I have to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to camouflage it. I'm going to put up fake copies of it all over the place so then you can't figure out which one is the right one. So I get all these fake gods that have all these fake attributes. So you pick one, my, my hope is that you pick one of the wrong ones instead of the right one. Amen? So that's why you see all these uh, fake religions, you know, these religions, uh, man-made religions, and people follow this stuff, and they follow it fervently, because a lot of them haven't never heard the truth. But what, what will happen, and what's happening even today, even as we speak today, even as I speak right now, what's going on in this world is, here we are in the Western societies that have had the Word of God for hundreds, uh, thousands of years. America has been in existence 200, 400 years or something like that. I say, you know, we, we, we became a nation in, you know, 200 or something years ago. But, you know, there was someone here, what, since 1640 or something like that? 16, I don't remember. Anyway, we, we've been in existence for, it seems like a long time, but it's really not a long time. Because when you look at other countries that's been in existence for thousands of years, you know, like the Chinese and the people in the Eastern nation, you know, in the Middle East, that's, that's where it all started at, in the Middle East. Those countries have been in existence for thousands of years. And the reason I made reference to specifically China and stuff, places like that, Asia, when you study in the New Testament, you find out um, when Paul was getting ready to go into Asia, God stopped him and wouldn't allow him to go preach the gospel there. He made him go to, to Europe to preach the gospel because God knew that that's where it was going to flourish first. Amen. And now is the time for it to start to flourish in, the middle, in, in yeah. Eastern countries. Yeah. And because a lot of times what people, what happens with people and what's happening in our society, because people have rejected Christ in our society. We, you know, America was founded on biblical principles. So this nation was risen up in a short time and it's been a, a great nation. And God used this country as a great light to, 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 to uh, have the gospel uh, uh, disseminated all around the world, you know, all, all these other countries. But what happens in these societies is because they are uh, prospering, what typically happens is now we've taken our eyes off of God and we start thinking, it's me. I'm beating my chest and saying, yeah. man, I'm smarter than everybody. Yeah. Man, that's the reason why I'm blessed because it's me. It ain't God. It's yeah. me. You know, and um, that's what's happened in Western society. Go look at Europe, see what's happening over there. That's what is going on this very day. And I've heard someone say this, and, and it's very true, that the gospel is being uh, marching out of those countries as quickly as it is into these other third, what we call third world countries. Now these people have been in bondage for thousands of years in Africa and in Asia. And these people have rejected the gospel, and even in, uh, what we call the 1040 window, and the reason they call it the 1040 window is the places in uh, 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 Arab countries where they don't allow the gospel to come in. Uh, the enemy has such a stronghold in these countries with this uh, religion of Islam that these people will murder you than to let you bring a Bible into these countries, but it's the enemy. It's not these people that are blinded, but it's the enemy behind them that's blinded them. Amen? So what we have to do is, number one, we have to pray for these countries. We have to pray for our country that our country will wake up. Amen? That the people of God will return to the foundational principles of the Word of God. What we're talking about today about Jesus. Who is Jesus? Man, if we don't know that as Christians, man, we ain't even believers. You, you can't even. This is basically... 
foundational Christianity. If you don't believe Jesus is God, then what you have is a phony gospel. It's not the truth. It's another gospel. And we have these so-called other gospels being preached right here in America. And people are starting to accept them as the truth. They're telling you that Jehovah Witnesses, that is true. It's the truth. It's not the gospel. Because they're preaching another Christ. And, 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 um, and I don't mind naming it. I'm going to just tell the truth. Amen. Um, um, what's the other one I'm trying to think of? Uh, it's, it's Mormons, yeah. It's become, a, uh, it's become such a major religion in our country that they're allowing them soldiers to, uh, they, they're making room for them. You know, we, 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 we're becoming so all-inclusive that we've concluded including everything but truth in our country. We're including everything but truth. Not people can do stuff like uh, worship the devil in a chapel. And we tell them it's okay. But then I can't say, I can't pray in the name of Jesus. Something is wrong in America. Amen? Um, <clears throat> praise God. <laughs> but my point being is, what we're doing is because we're rejecting truth, now we're, the Bible says, because you love not the truth in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, that God would send them a strong delusion that they would believe a lie and be damned. Because if you reject truth, there's nothing left for you but a lie. So now, the truth is marching out of America, but it's being received in places like uh, Africa, who, who've been in bondage for thousands of years. And these people have been in poverty because they've been in, they, they have a taskmaster who's been killing them for thousands of years. And I'm talking about the enemy. For all these uh, uh, religions, uh, man-made religions, I mean, you can, the list goes on and on and on of them. But Jesus is the only one that... Uh, is God. Jesus is the only one that could pay the price for our sins. We all know this, but we have to be willing to preach it. We have to be willing to not to compromise the truth. You can't compromise. When you hear somebody, you have to uh, tell them the truth. Amen. If you love them, tell them the truth. Amen. They may be angry at you. They may want to spit on you. One day, in this country, they may want to kill you. Uh, it may have already come to that point in this country. But they may be openly doing it soon, is what I'm saying. And, and, and saying it's okay to do that. Because uh, they're taking away our rights as Christians. And I'm not saying it to scare y'all. All I'm saying is we have to be willing to stand for the truth no matter what. Because ultimately, even if someone do take my life, they, they're only opening the doors for me to step into eternity. Amen? So um, we'll be just like the, the other saints that are before us who love not, not their lives unto the death, amen? It says in the book of uh, uh, Hebrews, in the 11th chapter, it talks about these saints, and we call it the hall of faith. But we have to be willing to stand for truth, praise God, whether it costs, well, no matter what it costs us, amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I didn't get a chance to get go through everything I wanted to go through here. Uh, but I do want to say one more scripture here. Let's go to, uh, I, I, <clears throat> real quick, let's go to 1 um, uh, Peter 3.16. This is what the apostles thought of Jesus. That's 1 first, first first Peter 3.16. First Timothy, excuse me. First Timothy, amen. Timothy. Timothy. I thought I said Peter. I'm just trying to rush, but let me slip my roll a little bit here. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy 3.16. It, it, it's all throughout Scripture who, who Christ is, but we have to know where it is, and we have to be willing to stand on the truth. Uh, okay. 1 Timothy 3.16, and it says, uh, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested, manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Amen. 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 Excuse me. <clears throat> It says, without controversy, 
that word controversy simply means dispute, debate, contention, strife, or argument. So without argument, amen, all the apostles agreed. Hallelujah. And all the believers should believe, I mean agree. Amen. That's, that's what we talk about all the time about speaking the same thing. We got, we, this, is, this is not a thing that we can compromise on. This is something you as a believer have to stand on that yes, Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. Yes, Amen. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. Amen. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. And it's plain in scripture. And I could give you a ton of scripture and I'm sure it's, uh, uh, many of you can do the same thing. There's so much scripture, but I'll just encourage you, study it for yourself um, and, uh, and, and, and be sure of what you believe. Be confident in the word of God because the word of God is the truth. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand for you. Glory to God. And His Son Jesus is the truth. Amen. The Bible says the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for our Savior. God our Savior. Hallelujah. Let's thank